You are listening to Tantibus, a story created by Devin Exam. <coughs> and welcome to the third chapter. The wooden floor was uncomfortable and rough on her cheek and body. Twilight must have fallen asleep on the floor again. Or had she rolled off of the bed in her sleep? It had never happened before, but it was always a minor concern of hers. She wanted to get up and start searching for her bed, but she could not as much as move a muscle. Sleep paralysis? I thought that only happened to ponies with narcolepsy or in extreme cases of social isolation. Twilight wondered, and then figured that she had no choice but to just wait it out. But instead, her eyes were slowly made to open. Something did not feel right about it. Her eyes did not exactly open by her command. It was still pitch black and she could not see anything. Was it still in the middle of the night? Her body slowly rose up, utterly beyond her control, and this was cause for panic. What the heck is happening to me? It's like I'm sleepwalking while in sleep paralysis at the same time. That can't be possible, right? Right? When she took her first involuntary step, it made an abnormal, creaky noise. What shocked Twilight further was the unfamiliar voice that picked up the sound and commanded, Who is there? Was there a stranger in her home? Asking her who she was when that pony clearly is the one intruding on her property? Twilight Sparkle felt her lips move and her vocal cords were vibrating. My name is Maverick. Who are you? My name is not Maverick. Why did I just say that? And what is wrong with my voice? Why is it so masculine? And how come I can't control it? The other pony responded, Well, I am Decca. Do you have any idea where we are located at the moment? The other pony was also male and had an eloquent and sophisticated canterlot accent. He was clearly not from the Ponyville regions. Twilight Sparkle felt her mouth open but was interrupted by a sudden rasp groan coming from her left. She, or he, quickly turned towards that direction, albeit still blinded by the darkness. Twilight's uncontrollable voice, named Maverick, spoke again. Are there more ponies here? Well, I am here, an unknown female voice renounced from the right. So am I. Are you all alright? Another deeper female voice inquired. The groan came back from the same pony as before. Twilight could hear footsteps left and right, likely from the other ponies desperately attempting to navigate this dark place. The voice of Decker came to assist the wailing pony. Are you okay? He asked while making his way for the origin of the cry. The source of the noise spoke at last. The voice was light and faltering, but definitely male. Where am I? I have my theories, but I cannot know for sure. What is more important that you are in good health, Decker replied calmly. I'm fine. A slight ache and some dizziness is all. Then some more hoofsteps were heard, followed by Decker's voice, directed at everyone in the room. How many are we here? There was a brief silence before Twilight's avatar, Maverick, responded. One. Decker continued. Two. One of the females picked up the trail. Three. The other, deeper female voice followed. Four. The third and previously unnoticed female said five. The dizzy pony eventually concluded six. Silence fell upon the room, and seven was nowhere to be heard. Eventually, Decker took it upon himself to take up on the to take on the leadership role. So we are six. Oh well, my ponies, I know where we are. Where are we then? Maverick reiterated. A sudden flash silenced them all as a simplistic yet decorative crystal chandelier lit up the room from the ceiling above. They were located in a ginormous hall with an at least ten feet, ten feet tall exit. Unfortunately, the doors were sealed tight. The ambience that this room emitted was that of a really old castle, as punctuated by the central chandelier. Aside from it and the double wooden exit doors, they found themselves observing observing the aged floor, impressive staircase leading upstairs, archaic artwork and furniture whose wooden shapes and patterns had surely been carf carefully carved by hooves ages ago. The place had an unsettling atmosphere overall. The female ponies were all looking around and inspecting for themselves. 
The first male was light blue, crouched up against the wall, and noticeably distressed. He really did remind Twilight of Fluttershy, and how she would react in this strange situation. The other male pony had a brown fur color, darker mane, and was frantically writing down notes into his notebook. He identified himself as Decker with his voice after finishing up a page. Six ponies, three female and three male. Two pegasi and two unicorns and two earth ponies. This place sure loves patterns. Twilight had a look around and gazed at the different races. She saw two unicorns, both female. She also saw the two pegasi, one female and the other one was crouched up. And the other one was the crouched up colt on the floor. But she saw only one earth pony, Decker, so she assumed that Maverick was one as well. Maverick spoke up. As I asked, where are we? He was getting frustrated. Twilight could feel that. She was a momentary part of him, and felt confusion and impatience suppress any other emotions. The other ponies were looking at him, and then at Decker, who faltered. Well, I think... I think we are in an unforeseen and immediate earthquake threw all of the ponies off their balance and onto the hard wooden planks that made up the floor. Maverick landed in front of a broken mirror. He looked into one of the larger shards and saw a light brown and rather troubled creature. There was no horn in his forehead nor any wings on his back. All that could be seen was the blue mane that spread itself across his ears and neck. Twilight asked herself, Why do I possess you? What makes you so special? He turned around and glanced over at Decker, who had been interrupted for the second time a few seconds earlier. With a terrified expression, Decker pointed past him and finished his sentence by declaring, We are in Tantibus! Maverick turned his attention towards where Decker was pointing. The wall was covered in fresh, dripping blood, shaping a small welcoming message to the visitors. The rules of the Tantibus challenge. Terrified screams and gasps came from left and right. Someone claimed it all to be a cruel joke, and another was on the verge of tears. Shortly after, a new line wrote itself in front of them. Rule 1. Only one competitor can leave Tantibus alive. Sweet Celestia, shouted the pe female Pegasi, still unnamed. Letter by letter, blood stained the wall as if through black magic. In just a moment, they could observe the second rule. Rule 2. That competitor may only do so when all others are dead. Maverick's voice echoed in his own mind, as only he and Twilight could hear it. He was praying to Celestia or whichever force responsible for the existence that was in all likelihood going to end for his part. Only one of them could leave, and with a 16.5% chance of survival, the odds were not in his favor. favor. His mind was racing to find solutions. Uh, what, if, what if I get the first hit? Uh, that would give me an advantage. But there, there are three females. Surely I am stronger than they are, and... Uh, what am I thinking? Snap out of it, Maverick. You can't kill these ponies. How could I live with the guilt? No, I would rather sacrifice myself. Twilight was shocked to hear his mind unravel, and found herself also begging for a way for this to turn out well. But she knew the rules. They were as clear as night and day, and by the end of this day, five ponies would be dead. A hoof surfaced from underneath the covers and pulled the curtain. In one motion, it covered up the small window next to the bed. Twilight's eyes could not adjust to the quite painful and bright morning sunshine that had just woken her up. When she came to think about it, why did she not cover the window before going to bed? She pondered for a moment and remembered why. She had left the window cleared of the curtain's cloth because she felt more relaxed having the moon's natural light shine over her, aiding her sleep. She had been very unsettled because... Her eyes and mouth opened promptly and she pushed off the covers. She threw a quick glance to her right and on her nightstand she found the book Spooky Tales and Legends, just as she had left it before falling asleep. She readjusted her position as she faced the bedside table completely and then used her magic to open up the book before her. Page 82, The Dark Mansion. Tantibus. Twilight recall recalled her incredibly vivid dream. It felt so real. Wait a minute. Twilight jumped out of the bed, awoke Spike on her way, and ran over to the bloody note. Decker and Maverick. They had their own tombstone on that field I saw. Did I just relive their encounter with a challenge? Was it real? Twilight, what is going on? 
croaked a tired Spike. Just some research. You can go back to bed, Spike. I'm hardly going to be able to do that now that I'm fully awake, he groaned. I'm sorry, I, I had an interesting dream. Twilight Sparkle resumed her discussion in her head. That light blue and shy Pegasus, was that Aeon? I need to find out if these ponies really existed. Twilight Sparkle walked into one of the rooms of the library and shortly came back out again, bringing a thick book with her. What are you doing now? Spike asked while rubbing his eyes to easier make out the details with his recently and rudely awakened vision. I'm trying to look up Aeon and some other ponies from this Spooky Tales and Legends book in our library's register to see if they are real. But Twilight, we only have Ponyville's register here. You'll only find ponies that were born in Ponyville in there. Twilight set the register down on the table in realization and turned to Spike. That's true. Twilight contemplated on where, on where she could find registers that covered all of Equestria, until she came up with an idea. Well, Spike, since you are already awake, would you mind sending a letter to Princess Celestia? Sure, I guess. Which one? He mumbled. I have to write it first, silly. Twilight grabbed the quill and an empty note using her magic and began writing. She started with a simple, polite greeting, and then moved on to excusing herself for the odd request that she was about to propose. She had, she just had to find some information on a certain group of ponies, that's all. Then she wrote down a list of the, a list of ponies from both Aeon's and Flaming Ace's Tentacles challenges. She also wrote down the author, Landon, who had written The Dark Mansion. Finishing it off, she excused herself one more time for her silly errand, and then wrote her goodbye. There, send it. Twilight instructed Spike, and shortly after, the letter was sent. Now she just had to wait for the response. The response came shortly after Twilight had set up their breakfast. Rudely, Spike burped green smoke along with the letter just before they began eating their eggs. Excuse me, Spike chuckled as he handed over the letter from the princess. Here you go, Twilight. My faithful student, Twilight Sparkle. Luckily, I had an open window in my schedule today. So I took the time to look up your small list of ponies in Cantalot's royal library. The first group you write about do not appear anywhere, except Flaming Ace, who is deceased. The rest, including Landon, seem to not exist. However, this other group of yours intrigued me. They existed and all seem to have gone missing around the same time. But that was very long ago, and they have been pronounced dead since. After that, follow the list of the ponies that had vanished or died, and at one time period they did. So the group from the Dark Mansion was completely fictional. Well, that makes sense. But not Flaming Ace? Celestia writes that he was real, but died later. But surely that must have been Landon that was the real one. If not him, then who wrote the novel? Twilight opened up the book again and looked around for clues. Then she brought up Princess Celestia's letter to double check. She read the last sentence, again, of the Dark Mansion. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Flaming Ace died two days after the novel was first published. Of course, Flaming Ace wrote it himself under a pseudonym. Who else could reflect Flaming Ace's emotions in such an intimate way other than himself? Twilight's conclusion had brought her joy, but the glee quickly faded from her face as she considered the weight of the realization. That poor thing, ending his life after such misery. Blah! Spike forwarded another letter to her library. On unsteady legs, he approached and handed it over to her. Another letter from Princess Celestia? Just what Twilight asked. Spike simply shrugged his shoulders and returned to his breakfast. Twilight took a sip from the, her cup of apple cider and began reading again. Dear Twilight Sparkle, you have to excuse me, it appears that I was wrong on one of the ponies. As it turns out, the Pegasus Aeon is still alive and located in the mental institution of Cantalot for our alarming behavior and self-inflicted injuries. It is also filed that he never communicates verbally, the most probable causes being listed as either trauma or an unknown mental disorder, as they had found nothing wrong with his vocal cords. If you would like to visit this candidate of yours, I would be happy to provide you with a train ticket. Myself, I will be quite busy in the upcoming days, so unfortunately you would be on your own after you step off at Canterlot's train station. With all regards, the princess. In shock, Twilight instinctively spit out the apple cider as she exclaimed, Aeon is alive?! <laughs>